What's happening guys, Keith here with another Impact Wrestling Review. So today we're going to take a look at the November 22nd edition of Impact, the annual Thanksgiving Day show, and the second annual Eli Drake Gravy Train Turkey Trot. So, this was a fun episode, as it is generally every year. I like the tradition, I mean, it's, it's just good fun, kind of take everything that's going on and throw it to the side for one night only where we have some fun so we open the show with Mackenzie introducing the two captains Eli Drake and Falaba then we go into the flashback or GWN flashback that is from last year's Eli Drake gravy train turkey trot so this uh the teams from last year were Falaba Garza Jr. Ali Dick Justice and Eddie Edwards versus KM, Caleb Conley, El Hijo del Fantasma, Chris Adonis, and Laurel Van Ness. And uh, Chris Adonis ended up wearing the turkey suit after putting up quite the fight. But uh, it's really crazy how uh, how much has changed in one year. Um, let's see. Garza Jr., no longer with the company. Fantasma, no longer with the company. Chris Adonis, no longer with the company. Laurel Van Ness, no longer with the company. Dick Justice, I don't believe he is with the company anymore. It's been quite some time since we've seen him. Um, we haven't seen Caleb Conley in quite some time either. I think from the Rebel Complex, the August tapings, maybe? Um, and then we had a complete character change for Eddie Edwards and Allie, and now KM and Falaba are tag team partners. So just a whole lot has changed over the past year um so we go back and we see falaba making his first pick and it ends up being km fala says that their name is pandemonium but km doesn't agree to that so i'm guessing they haven't fully decided on what they're going to be called uh but km says the most important part about tonight is that i've got your back and you've got my back and neither of us will be wearing the turkey suit so then we head over to Eli Drake, and he's making his first pick. Spin the wheel and make the deal. That's That was his thing throughout the night. Um, he picks Katarina first, and uh, Eli obviously doesn't look happy at this point. She wants to know why he isn't looking happy. He says, you know, I was kind of hoping for someone that's going to be able to match up to the size of KM. She says she's a wonderful wrestler, and she will show him what she is made of. Eli is obviously not pleased. So we get a flashback to the 2007 Turkey Bowl. AJ Styles gets pinned by Samoa Joe. AJ does not want to win the tur wear the turkey suit. So Jim Cornette comes out and says, if you don't, you're fired. So then we head back to Fala Ba, and him and KM are joking about Eli picking Katarina, to which Ba, you know, says that he wants to take her out on a date. KM says, you can't take her out on a date. We're going to war. Uh, ba ba end up ends up making his second pick, and it's Japanese sensation Kikotaro. Um, he is a well-known comedy wrestler, so he fit in perfectly with this. I believe he is now residing in uh, Nevada anyway, so it makes even more sense. Then we see Scarlett come out with the girls from Sexy Show. They come out on the stage. That's it. And then we get some more video submissions. Those are fantastic as usual. That, that was sarcastic. Um, then Eli makes his second pick, and it's Jay Christ. Jake comes out, and he starts imitating Eli Drake, which always makes me laugh. And uh, Sammy calls him an idiot and starts yelling at him. And Eli, you know, is like, as long as you guys don't wear the turkey suits, it's all good. Sammy then threatens Jake and says that if he loses and wears the turkey suit, he's going to have to eat the onions at the OVE Thanksgiving, which confused the hell out of everyone. But he was going to town with it, and uh, Jake wanted no part of it, so that was funny. Uh, then we get the Impact roster being asked what their favorite Thanksgiving memory is, and that happens a couple times throughout the show. Um, and then KM and Falaba at this point, they're not happy that Eli got Jay Chris because, you know, with Jay Chris comes Dave Chris and Sammy Callahan. And Ba says, you know, every Ba. So that this comes up later on in the evening. That's the only re reason I bring it up. Ba makes his third pick. It's Desmond Xavier. He walks in and says, you guys are going down. You're wearing the turkey suit, which KM and Ba are like, 
bro, we're on the same team. And he, he turns around and goes, those guys are wearing the turkey suit and going down. And they're like, uh, I don't know if uh, we're on the same page here. And Desmond says he wants to make the Eli Drake gravy train turkey trot an acronym because it's too long, which it's true. Um, then we go to see Eli, and he says that he knows what Falaba is thankful for, and he should thank OVE because we're making progress. It wasn't just Ba that came out of his mouth, but Ba, everything Ba. So that that was funny. Um, he makes his fourth pick, and it's Rohit Raju. Uh, Gamas comes up with Rohit and uh, Gamas Singh Jr. I forget what he's going by now. Uh, Gamas says that when you pick one of us, you get all of us. And Eli's like, wow, I'm getting bonus buys today. Gama says they're going to ruin Thanksgiving. Rohit talks about more Thanksgiving food, says he likes gravy, which, of course, upsets Gama, and Gama hits him, and they walk away. Um, so I think the Desi Hit Squad is pretty much turned into a comedy act more than anything. Uh, then we get more of the favorite Thanksgiving memories. Ba makes his fifth pick. It's Alicia Edwards. Ba is obviously happy about this, Another a female on the team. Then KM reminds him, he's like, Eddie Edwards, marriage, Kenny, uh, but yeah, they want to know if she's able to hold her own against Katerina. She's obviously insulted by this. Then Ba tells her an awful joke. She is not amused, amused, and she leaves. So that was that. Eli makes his fifth pick, and it is Glenn Gilberti, formerly known as the Disco Inferno. Um, I guess he's a part of the Ring Warriors show because I think the episode that I caught, he was managing a team, and I believe that they were taped in uh, Las Vegas, so it makes sense that he's hanging around those parts. But he says he's going to do this because he wants to impress Scarlett. He says, Gilberti says, we're going to win by using CGI, and that's class, good looks, and intelligence. And he says, Fala is going to end up in the turkey suit, Scarlet will ask him to marry him, and Eli will be his best man. Oh, delusional Glenn Gilberti. Then we find out that there will be an Ultimate X match at homecoming for the vacant X Division Championship. Very fitting. Um, I'm glad they brought the match back. I'm sure most people are as well. It's been quite some time, I believe, since we've seen one. Um, but it should be interesting to see who the competitors are in the match, if this will be, like, five people or whatever if there's going to be a match to determine who gets into the x ultimate x match we will see so they did add some something of importance to the show tonight at least in this aspect uh and then at this point mckenzie announces that the ultimate x match is happening glenn gilberti says that he was the one that invent invented ultimate x because all the stupid uh, guys wanted to do all these high flying spots so he wanted to do them off buildings and then he said, then management told him that wouldn't be safe. So then he came up with the Ultimate X idea. And then uh, he, you know, Mackenzie's like, I thought Don Callis came up with that. And then he has his own thing to say about Callis, which just unfolds so much later on in the evening with Callis on commentary during the, the five on five match, which was absolutely hilarious. Then we get a look back at all the option C uh, matches or whatever you want to call it. Um, then we see Eli and the rest of his team. He is ensuring his team that they don't have to worry about wearing the dreaded turkey suit, which turns into everyone fighting and yelling. Scarlet walks up and says she'll be scouting talent tonight, and she turns to Gilberti, and she's like, you look familiar, because earlier on he said, I sent a bunch of submissions to her, which all got overlooked. So that was pretty funny. Um, and then Falaba gives his team a pep talk, and then... KM is able to translate it for the whole team. And then we got the match. So we have Eli Drake, Katarina, Jay Chris, Rohit Raju, and Glenn Gilberti versus Falaba, KM, Desmond Xavier, Kikitaro, and Alicia. Um, so as soon as Glenn Gilberti makes his entrance, Callis is running him down. It was it was so funny. He's done this so much on Twitter, and he does it on the Killing the Town podcast. Uh, then all of them are in the ring. They take their oath that they'll wear, wear the turkey suit if they lose. I mean, the beginning of the match was pretty standard. For some reason, Gama Singh decided to get in the ring. I think he hit Fala Ba. He doesn't take too kindly to this, but Rohit attacks Fala from behind. Um, and we see at one point Rohit, KM, J. Chris, Desmond Xavier, and Eli Drake all have each other in a figure four headlock in the middle of the ring. 
Uh, Fala sees this as a prime opportunity to go after Rohit, which was the bottom man, to turn him all over and put him in a Boston Crab position. I was really hoping he was going to do a giant steamroller, but I guess there wasn't enough room for him to do it. Um, as Ba has everybody in the uh, Boston Crab-like position, Scarlet comes out. Everyone's attention is obviously averted. We see Gil Glenn Gilberti following her around the ring while Callis is yelling, calling him a predator and to call Dateline. Oh, I was just dying at this point. Don Callis was so funny. She leaves, sits on the stage to watch the rest of the match. Uh, we see Desmond Xavier get the tag. He's on fire. He hits Jake with an X19. Then he takes out the rest of OVE. He hits a back handspring tope con Hilo over the top rope onto everybody on the outside. Eli jumps up to the top rope. Looks like he's going to jump onto everybody on the outside. He just jumps onto the apron. He's like, no, nah, I'm too smart for that. Uh, Falaba comes, knocks Eli off the apron onto everybody, and then Fala jumps himself off the apron onto everybody. Then everyone hits a steamroller on Gilberti, including Ref Riley. And then Ba eventually gets the win, hitting the bonsai drop on Gilberti. So obviously he is made to wear the uh, turkey suit. He puts up a fight saying that he lied when he took the oath. The face team won't let him leave. Scarlet walks down and convinces him to put it on by saying she finds nothing sexier than a guy that doesn't take himself seriously. At this point, he is obviously willing to put it on. She grabs the mic after he puts it on and tells him he looks like an absolute idiot and leaves. And that was the show. Like I said, it's just a fun tradition they have. It's always enjoyable. Nothing to take too seriously. I must give Impact Management so much credit, or the booking team, whatever you want to call it, for making Gilberti the one to wear the turkey suit. You, you don't want to do that to one of your talent. Um, it's I know a lot of people brought this up because this past week on SmackDown, they did their own turkey feast fight or whatever it was, and you had the tag team champions, the ones take the bath and get hit with pies and turkey and all that stuff. And your champs are made to look like a laughing stock. Now, they bring in Gilberti, who's just there to do the job, to wear the turkey suit, to look like an idiot. Well done, Impact. Good job. So, that's all I have for you guys today. Fun episode. I'll be back Sunday with the viewership report. Should be interesting to see. Thanks for checking out my video. And until then, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye. Did you like that video? If so, click here to check out more great content. Thank you for supporting the Clock Cleaners Podcast.